This is Pat's Two Cents. Well, let's go to Joshua chapter 7 for starters. This is going to be a very challenging word. But the children of Israel committed a trespass in the accursed thing. For Achan, the son of Carmi, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah of the tribe of Judah, took of the accursed thing. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against the children of Israel. And Joshua sent men from Jericho to Ai, which is beside Beth Bethaven, on the east side of Bethel, and spake unto them, saying, Go up and view the country. And the men went up and viewed Ai. And they returned to Joshua and said unto him, Let not all the people go up, but let about two or three thousand men go up and smite Ai. And make not all the people to labor thither, for they are but a few. So there went up thither of the people about three thousand men, and they fled before the men of Ai. Mm, what happened? And the men of Ai smote them about thirty and six men, for they chased them from before the gate, even unto Sherebim, and Shebarim, and smote them in the going down. Wherefore the hearts of the people melted and became as water. And Joshua rent his clothes and fell to the earth upon his face before the ark of the Lord until eventide, he and the elders of Israel, and put dust upon their heads. And Joshua said, Alas, alas, O Lord God, wherefore hast thou at all brought this people over Jordan? to deliver us into the hands of the Amorites, to destroy us? Would to God we have been content and dwelt on the other side of Jordan. Oh, Lord, what shall I say when Israel turneth their backs before their enemies? For the Canaanites and all the inhabitants of the land shall hear of it and shall environ us around and cut off our name from the earth. And what wilt thou do unto thy great name? And the Lord said unto Joshua, Get thee up. Wherefore liest thou thus upon thy face? Israel, this is verse 11, Israel hath sinned. And they have also transgressed my covenant, which I commanded them. For they have even taken of the accursed thing, and have also stolen and dissembled also. And they have put it even among their own stuff. Stop it right there. Stop it right there. I could tell from the scriptures the Lord was giving me. As some of us are allowing our little pets to get mingled in with God's blessing. We got some pets, y'all. And we're making allowances that God is not pleased with. Now. This is not for everybody. And for those of you who want to go into denial, you can go on and leave the service now because it's going to get worse as we go. If you can take it, you can make it. All right. Now, hmm. I want to read, before I go into the story, I want to read Matthew chapter 5. What does Matthew chapter 5 say about this? Matthew chapter 5 says, I'm going right to the verse. Matthew chapter 5 says, verse 6, Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall, not they might, they shall, be filled. Let me tell you why we have so many empty Christians, so many restless Christians, so many unsatisfied Christians. Because they have too many pets. You know them little old ladies that have all them cats all over their house? And when you walk in, you got cat droppings, you got cat smell, you got that cat uh, urine odor, it, it's hard to get rid of that. 
And she may not have told you that she had cats, but as soon as you hit the door, the, the odor hit your nose. And you know, oh, Lord, this is one of those cat women. Or your allergy will tell you that. Well, let me tell you, babe, God doesn't have to sniff and God doesn't have any allergies. But God knows when you have sin in your life. He knows when you're making allowances that he's not pleased with. It's a hard message. <laughs> it's going to be hard. And it might get worse. So let's go back to Joshua chapter 7. I want to do a quick comparison. When you look at Matthew chapter 5 verse 6. They shall be filled. What are they filled with? Do you know there's a satisfaction? There's a a supernatural joy that goes with the anointing that comes from living a holy life. The sacrifice of obedience brings sweet odors to the Lord. It brings a sweet aroma, sweet incense to God. Incense is a form of worship in the Old Testament. It brings a sweet savor to God. And when God smiles on your life, that brings joy. That brings peace. It's an overabundance of it. Now, some of you, I'm going to tell you, the Lord showed me some of you are scratching your behinds and picking your nose, trying to figure out how you're going to make yourself happy, trying to make your way to the promised land. But your promised land is not what God promised you. Your idea of a promised land is not what's in God's will for your life. But you're going to make it happen anyway. Because your flesh needs to be fed. Your flesh needs to be gratified. Your flesh is hankering. It's got you scratching and digging digging and scratching and you're sniffing and you're searching and you're on the hunt and you're you're out there baby but you're not living holy you got too many pets up in your house let's name some of those pets lust sexual sin potty mouth foul attitude spite, vindictiveness, witchcraft, the occult. I'm going to stop there because the list goes on and on, on and on ad infinitum. And we don't need to go down that list. It's never ending when it comes to the flesh and what happens on this planet. But I'm going to tell you something. Let me, okay, uh, thank you, Lord. I feel like the Lord wants me to add manipulation, lies, deceit, control. Mm, mm, mm. Rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, the Bible says. All right. Let's keep on talking here. Let's get back to Joshua 7. The reason they lost the battle when God promised them, I'm taking you into the promised land and you follow my commandments and you will win. But the reason they lost is because Achan had some stuff. He was mingling, cohabiting. He mixed in the accursed thing that God specifically said, Touch not. When the Bible says touch not the unclean thing, it's not a joke. It's not a suggestion. It's not a request. It's a command. And many of us are touching stuff that we need to keep our hands off of. Many of us, our hands are going where God did not tell our hands to go. Mm-hmm. 
So I ask you, where have your hands been lately? Where has your mouth been lately? Where has your body been lately? What are you doing with all your instruments of unrighteousness? What are you doing with it? You don't have to answer me. God knows. That's the point. You're waiting for God to bless your every step, your every endeavor, your desires, your wishes, your goals, your dreams, the desires of your heart. And you're wondering why has God forsaken you? Why is it so hard? Why are you on a roller coaster ride? Because your life resembles a roller coaster. One minute you're in the word, the next minute you're in the bed. One minute you're listening to gospel music, the other minute, yeah, yeah. Whatever you're watching, looking at, partaking in. God knows. I don't know. I'm getting this hot off the press. So, this was not to be this hard. But it's getting to be harder than what I had planned for it to be. So I'm going with the Holy Ghost. Now, what I want to say to you, help me, Father. God is, see, we don't realize God is with us 24-7. He's in us. He's around us. He's through us. He's on us. He's, he's about us. Everything in our life, God is aware of. Every thought every emotion so and every secret motive of your heart God is aware of now let me say this too real quick and then I'm going to move on to another chapter and verse some of us think we can make things happen on our behalf and we want to consult with psychic hotlines we want to consult with tarot cards we want to go to those special specialized stores and buy aromas, candles, mm-hmm, you hear me? Incense, potions. We want to formulate our own way so we consult and, and collaborate with the dark side and we think we're going to put a spell on this one and a spell on that one. And we're playing, we're tinkering with the devil's toys. God ain't having it. I don't know who I'm talking to, but if you don't stop, God's going to put a stop to your stuff. I don't even know who's on now. So some people may have just come on. I don't know. I'm not seeing it because I, I I knocked down the window so I could talk straight to the camera, straight to you. I got my camera up here and my webcam down below. So my point to you is you better straighten up and fly right or you may not ever fly again. Judges chapter 6, then we go to Deuteronomy chapter 8. Starting at verse 1. And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord. And the Lord delivered them into the hand of Midian seven years. How long do you have to be delivered into the hand of the enemy before you get tired of having your booty whooped? And the hand of Midian prevailed against Israel. And because of the Midianites, the children of Israel made them the dens, which are in the mountains and caves and strongholds. And so it was when Israel had sown that the Midianites came up and the Amalekites and the children of the east, even they came up against them. And they had camped against them and destroyed the incense of the earth till thou come into Gaza and left no sustenance for Israel, neither sheep nor ox nor ass. Hmm. For they came up with their cattle and their tents, and they came as grasshoppers for multitude. In other words, it was an innumerable army. For both they and their camels were without number, and they entered in the land to destroy it. 
And Israel was greatly impoverished because of the Midianites and the children of Israel cried unto the Lord. And it came to pass when the children of Israel cried unto the Lord because of the Midianites that the Lord sent a prophet unto the children of Israel which said unto them, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, I brought you up from Egypt and brought you forth out of the house of bondage. I delivered you out of the hand of the Egyptians and out of the hand of all that oppressed you and drave them out from before you and gave you their land. And I said unto you, I am the Lord your God. Fear not the gods of the Amorites in whose, hand you, in whose land ye dwell, but ye have not obeyed my voice. And I'm going to stop right there. We're not even going to tell the story because right now we're dealing with why things can go awry in our lives. This isn't for everybody in our group. So those of you who know that this is not for you, pray for those you think it's for or pray for those who God knows it's for. That the Holy Ghost will bring Holy Ghost conviction. Because I'm going to tell you this. The goodness of God leads us to repentance. You hear me? Godly sorrow worketh repentance. If you're not dealing with godly sorrow in your heart, you're not repentant. You'll hear the word, ask God to forgive you. You move on. Next thing you know, you're back to the same old, same old. Because, hey, you got needs. Hey, I've been like this all my life. Hey, I'm damaged goods, so I got excuses. No, you don't have an excuse. See, the Bible says, God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. I knew a guy, let me share this with you real quick. Golly. <laughs> oh, I knew a guy who was called to preach. I saw it, and one of the women at the hair salon, we were discussing it. They said they, when he was telling the testimony of how God spoke to him and told him to walk away from the dope dealer, while he walked away, he was delivered from uh, years of a heroin, a very mature heroin addiction. He was free, boom, just like that. But the problem was, even though the man was attending church, he couldn't keep his baseball bat from dipping in the ink wells of the women's skirts. He couldn't leave well enough alone. He couldn't stop telling his little lies. He couldn't stop using and playing people. He couldn't stop manipulating, uh, uh, manipulating. Has the man ever preached the gospel? Probably not. Why? He had to send out word to all his cohorts and all his former partners that he's got AIDS, full-blown AIDS. See, when you play with the devil's toys and play on the devil's turf and warm yourself by the devil's fire, you are subject to all the onslaught he wants to bring into your life. God's not going to stop him because there are prices we pay, consequences we must face for some of the acts we commit. Now, it pays to be super merciful to everybody because God says to the merciful, I will show myself merciful. It does pay to be merciful. Oh, you got to be careful. All right, let's move on. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. Okay, let me share. Wait, no, no, no. Let, let me share. Oh, yeah, Deuteronomy 8 because... We got to go there. Now I'm dealing with another group of y'all. Deuteronomy 8. Mm, mm, mm. Starting at verse 1. All the commandments which I command thee this day shall ye observe to do, that ye may live and multiply. You hear that word multiply? 
Well, I ain't talking about babies, y'all. Listen to this. That ye may live and multiply and go in and possess the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers. I'm feeling this one right now. And thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee these 40 years in the wilderness to humble thee and to prove thee to know what was in thine heart, whether thou wouldest keep his commandments or no. And he humbled thee and suffered thee, which means allowed thee to hunger and fed thee with manna, which thou knewest not, neither did thy fathers know that he might make thee that man, that he might make thee know that man doth not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord doth man live. Now, I'm going to stop there for a minute. Hmm. Multiply. What's another expression for multiply? Not just making babies. You must grow. You must bear much fruit. Fruits of holiness. Fruits of righteousness. Fruits of strength. The anointing. Serving God in every way you can. But let me tell you this, y'all. Some of y'all are running scared. I'm going to tell you that right now. This is the Lord showed me this. Some of y'all are running scared. I honestly believe. Now, this is my, this is my own conviction. And Lord, if I'm wrong, forgive me. I'm talking from my heart and I'm talking from your heart. Let me decrease that you might increase. But I feel justified in saying this from the scriptures that God says he will give you the power to get wealth. I believe some of y'all should have been property owners by now. Some of y'all should be owning your own house. My question to you, because I don't know, I'm not God. What holds you back? What hinders you? from stepping out and possessing your own land? What hinders you from getting your own place? What hinders you? Is it too comfortable where you are now? Are things copacetic? You chilling? Hmm? Is there fear mixed in with that? Trepidation, mm. hesitance. My question is, why do you fear and what are you afraid of? Don't let failure be it because when God tells you to do something and you act on it, baby, nothing but success is going to follow. Unless, unless you know you got too many kittens in your house. Back to them kittens again. Because, see, when you got a lot of kittens, you have a lot of mess mixed up in with the blessing. And you will short circuit some of the blessings, which means some things will never come to fruition. Some things you will never get to experience until you get rid of those kit cat, them little kitty cats, those little pet sins. Mm hmm. In my little baby. I've been like this all my life. I'm wounded. I'm scarred. God understands. He knows where I came from. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Now it's different. He knows when we're struggling. He knows when we're striving for perfection. He knows the difference. And he knows when we're just, you know, we got the oops. Mm, oops, there it is. I said, oops, there it is. Mm. Yeah, I said it. Yeah, I did it. Yeah. Oh, well, God knows. God knows my heart. Yeah, that's the problem. God does know your heart. 
now. <laughs> what I want to ask you is have you been diligently seeking God for what he'd like you to do in your life? What's your next step? Huh? Some of y'all want to live with family for the rest of your life. And God may be challenging you because he wants to exercise muscles in your life, disciplines in your life, to whom much is given, much is required. And when much is required, it can get to be a pain in the butt. But when you're in the middle of your blessing, you handle the little pains, the little twinges, the little pinches, the little ouches, because they come with the package deal of living on this planet. But if you never venture out, you never know how far you can go, how high you can reach. You never know all the things that God has for you because you're too busy being comfortable. And there may be things God wants to bring into your life that first, okay, let's say this. Let's put it like this. I believe God wants to bless some of y'all in the biggest ways. I know a lady. Let's put it like this. I'm trying to be careful because, see, in a lot of ways in my own life, I'm very underdeveloped, and I know it. And I know there are things that hinder us. I get that. I'm not criticizing anybody. But I do understand that there are times when God's got things way out here for you, but you're still sitting. Oh, okay. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, my God. Oh, I got to tell the story. This is a book I plan to write one day. So I'll share it with you. The Lord shared it with me, told me to tell it. I'm going to tell it. And Lord, don't let nobody steal my book. Imagine a homeless person. Imagine this now. In that homeless person are jewels, all kind of giftings and callings and abilities and strengths and oh my goodness and this rich man this is all allegorical now the rich man is god so let's go with the rich man let's look at it from the natural the rich man has this humongous mansion the mansion has two or three stories to it and the basement the basement is so elaborate that anybody would feel blessed to live in the basement. So the man, the person that the man is trying to house, does not want to part with his goods. That's all he's got to his name. So the man says, okay, I'll tell you what. This is, this is for the saints. This is for you, God's people. Listen to this, y'all. So... The man says, I'll tell you what, go on and bring your wagon, go on and bring your stuff and just take it downstairs in the basement. So, and then you can, you know, put it where you need it, where you can access it and then make yourself at home. So the homeless person goes down in the basement. Listen to this. I hope this is not boring you. You got to hear this story. The Lord gave me this story, y'all. So the man goes down in the basement. He, 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 uh, he, he bounces his little wagon down the steps. And he gets it down the stairs. He gets in there. And he's setting up. Got his little, his little sleeping bag and... He's getting himself set. Got a little hot plate. He's got a plug now. He's got a power source. He can heat up his food. And oh, he's just having a ball. A place, the temperature is perfect. It's, it's so nice and clean down there. He feels like he's in seventh heaven. 
Check it out, y'all. God's talking to somebody. He's in seventh heaven. He's set. He doesn't have to pay rent. He doesn't have to buy food. It's all right there. He's got a refrigerator in the basement, a washer, a dryer, everything in the heart. Couldn't even a little kitchenette is down there. So he's he's hooked. He's he's got it going on, as Jeanette said. It's on and cracking, baby. All right. So the 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 owner of the house says. I'm going to leave. I'll be back in a couple of weeks uh, and see how you're doing. And he took him on a tour of the house so he, he'd know where everything was. And then, you know, the guy's down in the basement. So the owner comes back two weeks later. Check it out. It's part of the message. Don't leave me, please. The man is looking for the guy. He's looking all over the house. So-and-so, are you here? Uh, you, you know, let's call him Pumpkinhead. Pumpkinhead, are you here? Pumpkinhead. Pumpkinhead. Can't find him. And then he hears a little movement down in the basement. So he opens the door and he goes down in the basement. And the man's got the place laid up for him to use exactly the way he needs it. And the man looks at him and he says, have you been upstairs? Oh, no, no, no. I've been down here. I stayed in my place. I didn't mess with your stuff. He said, do you realize I was trying to, when I told you make yourself at home, the whole house was for you to enjoy. There was nothing off limits to you. Nothing. You stayed down here the whole time. Well, I didn't know I could go upstairs. It's so beautiful. It's so, it's, it's, it's so, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Elegant. So anyway, he just, he just, it's so regal up there. I, I, I thought you wanted me. I told you to take your stuff down there because you didn't want to part with it. I didn't tell you you had to stay down there. I got six bedrooms in this house, seven bedrooms. You could have taken your pick. I got kitchens on every floor with all the amenities. I've got people coming in, cleaning the house, people coming in. They could cook you whatever you wanted. I'm rich beyond compare. You didn't have to tiptoe around here. Anything you want, you could have. So then he tries to tell the guy, when I brought you here, all this was for you. The only reason you didn't get to enjoy it was because you didn't feel worthy. But I never stopped you. You could have taken your freedom and explored all your horizons. You could have slept in each bedroom and seen which one you wanted the most. So I got to leave again. But remember, the whole house is for you. Now, whether you take advantage of it or not, that's on you. Now, I'm going to stop there. My question to you is with all that God has for you, what have you not taken advantage of? What have you refrained yourself from enjoying? What have you hindered yourself from exploring because of fear? Huh? What is it? God wants you to go out and possess your land. What are you doing sitting on your do nothing? What are you doing living in the basement? Oh, the basement's pretty. But that's not the best God can do for you, baby. Amen? Amen. The sky is the limit, y'all. God's got stuff for you you never dreamed of. God's got stuff for you, you know, some of you don't even feel worthy of, like the homeless man living in the basement. But God's telling you, I got a whole mansion. Pick your room. Pick your amenities. 
It's all there for you. But you're the one that's got to do what it takes to get up in there and get to know this whole new world that God has for you. Hmm? Or are you going to stay safe in the basement for the rest of your life? Waiting. Waiting for your boat to come in and you in it, baby. It's right there at your fingertips. But now that you got the basement all comfortable, well, why move now? I mean, I'm used to this. I'm used to this. I don't know what I'm going to do with all that marble. Let me share this with you real quick. Just change stories. Change channel. There's a woman I know that had a ministry. A men's home. A woman's home. Mm -hmm. Now, my... Let's go on me real quick. If I had been in a situation where some rich person was divvying out all this beautiful high-end furniture for free, I would have been like, yeah, buddy, let's hook this place up. I want these ladies and I want these men to know what it's like to truly live in a lap of luxury. They may have never had that. I want to treat them special. I want to make them feel like daddy's little prince and daddy's little princess. Daddy being our father in heaven. This lady refused the furniture. And the woman couldn't understand why she would refuse this high end. This stuff is free. The woman told her, oh, that stuff is too nice. No, it's, it's too pretty. Is that the way some of you feel about God's blessing? Huh? Think about it. Look at yourself in the mirror. Is that the way you feel? Is that how low your self-esteem is? Is that how high your wall of fear stands that keeps you hemmed into your little prison, your little basement, safe and comfy, cozy and comfortable? When are you going to reach beyond that door? Climb those stairs and check out the other parts of the house. When are you going to see all that you can accomplish in your life? Reach your fullest potential. See what you can do. Do what you've never done before. Go where you've never gone before. Try what you've never tried before. Why not? God promised it to you. What is holding you back? And I stopped there. So to capitalize it, I mean, to capsulize everything. I sure messed that up. For those of you who have allowed sin in your life, you got to get it together, y'all. You got to ask God to give you godly sorrow if you know you really don't care about doing what you're going to do because you're big and bad enough to do what you're going to do anyway. And you just expect God, hello, to forgive you. He's not obligated to do that, y'all. God is not mocked. And for those of you who are God's children in covenant with him, don't hold yourself back. Don't let any monkey stop your show. Don't let any devil tell you you can't have this or you can't have that. No, if God tells you to go out and possess your land, baby, it's time. Time out for you sitting on your do-nothing, picking, a, biting your fingernails, waiting on the Lord to holler from heaven. Hmm? All right. Okay, now the Lord is ushering me to share a quickie. Years ago, I had never owned my own hair salon. Didn't have the money to buy the equipment. What did the Lord do? Number one, he let me know in my spirit, Esther's going to close her shop. You got to move. And I asked the Lord to give me an undeniable sign. Following week, Esther tells me, Pat, my husband wants me to close the shop. So I'm letting everybody know a couple of months in advance because we're selling, you know, we're selling the building. Okay. 
I knew I didn't want it because it was in a, a bad location. It was, you know, location, location, location. So I started spying out the land and praying, spying out the land and praying. And I went up to Micho's. And when I walked in there, there was a little lady doing a bunch of little old ladies' hair. And there was another lady doing And it was so quiet and peaceful. And I said, I like this. So I went on and, and opted to go there. Now, huh, a year later, we find out that the property is up for sale. So now we're scratching our heads where we're going to go. Well, they're scratching their heads. I'm asking God. So I said, Lord, I said, why do I feel like we don't have to go anywhere? Are they going to let us stay, the new owners? And the Lord was like, just wait on me. Just wait on me. Watch the traffic. I said, okay. So when I went to the shop, I told the ladies at the shop, I feel like the Lord's saying we don't have to go anywhere. I didn't know why, but I felt it. So then when the owners came, we introduced ourselves and I asked them, I said, can we stay? And they said, no. Okay, we can't stay. But I'm feeling in my spirit, we ain't got to go nowhere. I'm still telling the ladies, God is saying we don't have to go. So I said, Did you, you know, any, any one of you guys want to take over the shop? No. Okay. Nothing left to do. I'm the only one left. So I said, Lord, do you want me to take over the shop? Yes. Oh. I never did this before. Do you want it? Uh, yeah. And I realized, oh, they're not taking their equipment. I get to work on all this equipment that I didn't pay a dime for. And all I have to do is pay the rent. As God had it, I was able to take on a salon without having to buy any equipment. On top of that, a year later, the new owners flipped the property, told us we had to go. So the other two hairdressers, they hightailed it out of there. And I stayed. I stayed the whole time I was allowed to. And I asked the Lord, where should I go? And it was as if the Lord said in my spirit, time to take a little stroll. So I walked up the street and walked around the corner. And I asked everybody, are there any of these buildings available? No, 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 no. Okay, so why did you have me come around here? Look in that store. So I looked in the store. It was a little boutique. And when I looked in the store, y'all, there was a lady there named Fiamma. Little Italian lady, little short little thing, red hair. She cracked me up. And I said, I asked her, I said, you know, she says, well, I'm leaving in two weeks, so you can have my building. I said, why are you leaving? She said, because I can't afford to carry it anymore. I said, okay, let me ask you a question. If you stayed and I moved in, you would have the boutique. I could have a little hair salon, you know, in a little corner. Would you be willing to share the building, just split the rent down? You know, 50-50, that way you wouldn't have to fork up all the money. And I wouldn't have to fork up all the money. She said, don't, don't do this to me. Are you serious? Long story short, I ended up in there with Fiamma. The most beautiful location, big picture window looking over the mountains, trees. It was beautiful. Right next to the sheriff department. Safe as can be. Sandwiched between the cleaners on one side and a dance studio on the right. And a nail place down the way. I mean, it was just so perfect. God really blessed. Now, at that point, I had to buy equipment. But the beautiful part is God just, he provided. That's all I got to say.
So now there was no more fear of stepping out on my own and not only being self-employed, but now owning my own salon. And when Fiamma left, my overhead was $2,300 a month. On top of that was insurance, utilities, and my own mortgage and my own household expenses. I never made more money than I made up at that shop. And it was such a beautiful location. The way my living room looks now, all that was in my hair salon with different chairs, of course. But all that, that's why my living room looks like that because that's the way my hair salon looks. God blessed me, y'all. He blessed me. Okay. I'm not going to keep going on and on. What I'm trying to tell you is you never know what's around the corner until you take a stroll and start spying out the land. See what God has for you. And if God says, go for it, you go for it. Don't you dare shrink back. Not when God tells you to go after it. It's a done deal. If you do the deal. Amen. All right. I'm done. I hope that lifts your spirits. I know it started out rough, but God smoothed that baby out, didn't he? Mm -hmm. God bless you.